16-year-old girl decides she needs to end her father's life. But she won't do it. She asks the boy. That boy says no. She then finds somebody else. What do you think we're talking about? Hmm. Today we're going to be discussing the true crime case of Danielle Black and the murder of her father. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz, your host here at Crimes Untold. And today, like I mentioned previously, we're going to be talking about Danielle Black. Now, if this is your first time here on my channel, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button down below, somewhere down here. Uh, turn your post notifications on all. That way you know whenever I upload. And yeah, like, comment, all of the above. Watch all of my other videos. I have a shit done. Anywho, so... 16-year-old Daniel Black was tried as an adult and convicted on solicitation of first-degree murder on July 15th of 2009. Her trial lasted only one day, and the jury deliberated for a total of 90 minutes. She was sentenced to 10 years for the solicitation, but I'll kind of revisit this in a little bit. So, Danielle Black asked a friend of hers to take care of her father while she was riding the bus one day. Now, this person that did in fact kill her father is 20-year-old Alec Eager. This is not the same person that she asked on the school bus to take care of her father. The person she initially asked to take care of her father was a boy named Gray, um, who was a high school dropout and he was 18. He was granted immunity, and he was given immunity in exchange for his testimony. So in his testimony at trial, he stated that the way it was portrayed is that he only had to rough up her father. And when he asked what he would get out of it, this is when Danielle would jokingly say nothing. Gray then proceeded to tell her that he wouldn't be the one for the job, and it would be overheard by someone that she said she would get Alec or Joey to do it. She got Alec to do it. So the reasoning behind this murder was due to her father beating her, allegedly, as she had claimed. Now, during the investigation after her father, Billy Lee Black, was murdered, they found absolutely no evidence that she was ever beaten or physically abused by her father. The only facts that came to light is that Billy was trying to keep his daughter from hanging out with the wrong crowd, and he was actually trying to be that of a good parent to his, prevent his daughter from having her life being ruined. Danielle was on the wrong side of the goth scene and drinking, and she was partying, and... Her favorite pastime was drinking blood. And no, I'm not kidding. That is a wormhole that I'm, I'd never want to go down again. So, all of which her father didn't approve of, and he was trying to help his daughter not ruin her life. So, due to this, Danielle was filled with rage, and she was filled with anger and hatred for her father. She wrote poems about wanting her de father dead and would even tell her friends the same thing. One of these friends did testify at her trial about how Danielle showed her Th her her thigh or showed her thigh to them of which she had a bruise and she had some scratches on her arm but she claimed also that this was from her dad beating her now the only violence or threatened violence that ever happened with her father in front of her was that of him threatening to shoot himself and this he threatened to do in front of her and her brother this all transpired after he quit drinking and post her and her, fa her father and her mother's divorce. This was talked about with a social worker during the investigation, and like I said before, the only violence that involved Danielle was actually the violence against herself, not the violence that her dad had threatened to commit in front of her. So she endured her own self-mutilation, possibly suicide attempt, and violent fantasies. She spoke about blood often, made references to stabbing and cutting in letters, or even in poems that the police collected during the investigation prior to her trial. She was very vocal about ill wishes towards her father and her father's mortality and speaking about the said abuse, allegedly. So this is... I'll have this on the screen as well. Your time is now up. I promise it won't hurt much. I'll have a smile on my face. If you do it again, you won't have a life to live. This is two different excerpts from two different poems. What a sweet girl, right? Her mother, Andrea, even could agree that, that the abuse allegation was unfounded, and prior to her divorce from Billy, there was none of that in the home. So let's talk about his actual death. 
Billy Lee Black was stabbed to death in the early morning hours of Halloween of 2008 behind his townhome in Hagerstown, which is 70 miles from Baltimore. He was stabbed to death and his own child procured him to be taken down and stabbed behind his home. He was stabbed 20 times. Stabbing was a result of a struggle that him and Alec Eager had after um, Alec was trying, like, going to scare him. Apparently, during this scare tactic, this is when um, Billy Black tried to grab a knife that he saw in Alec's belt, and then this result in Alec stabbing him. Some of these stab wounds were to his back, and it severed his spinal cord. It is said that accidents or acts of violence happen right around the corner or near your home. And unfortunately, this happened right behind his home, in an alley right behind his home. His body was found slumped over near his pickup truck in the alley behind his home. So in 2011, her conviction was overturned due to allowing evidence of her father's murder into the trial. So because she was the solicitor, she wasn't actually the murderer. This is where they found it was an injustice. So they had to overturn her conviction and then she would have a new trial. So due to this, she had a new trial and she could have it moved to juvenile court due to her age at the time instead of being tried as an adult. So she would be retried and pled guilty to solicitation to commit first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Here's the thing though. All but six years was suspended from her sentence. Why? Why would they do that? You may ask. I don't no. Since the ruling, she has been paroled from prison and is currently on probation. <sighs> Personally, I wouldn't let her crazy ass out, especially when she solicited the murder of her father and somebody actually went through with it. You yeah, know. So in 2015, Alec Eager was back in court and his lawyer entered a motion to modify his sentence. So this motion would be denied. Um, back in 2010, he entered an Alford plea of first degree murder. And with this plea, he was sentenced to life. As of now, what I was looking up, he is still trying to fight his sentence and try and modify it because I mean, he's, yes, he's the one that committed the murder, but he wasn't the mastermind. So what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to know. And I will see you guys in another video.